Okay, on eBay I acquired this Picosecond Pulse Lab Model 415 Pulse Generator. Unfortunately, oh, it's only a driver, it's missing the pulse head. Talking to the manufacturer, they indicated to me that this generation is a um, uses step recovery diode, so hopefully the output is, is high enough to drive our uh, step recovery diode. So I'm going to open this thing up and see what's inside first before I power it up. Okay, so I opened up the Picosecond Pulse Lab. Had a hard time getting this last screw off. I'll have to hack that off later. So my impression of this unit was that it was a driver only. Um, but the good news is it looks like it actually has the pulse head built into it right here. Which I was missing. So, and it says uh, 10 volt rise time less than TR less less than 50 picoseconds. So I may not have to use the hacked oscilloscope board altogether. Alright so I fired it up and uh, checking the voltages in the power supply connector to make sure nothing crazy is coming out. Looks like uh, about maybe 12 and uh, and 15 and of course ground. Alright, seems reasonable. The power supply is running just fine so I'll hook up the board and then we'll uh, look at the pulse output on the uh, high-speed scope over here, see if it's functioning. Alright, so I've got this thing working now. Um, I have uh, a pulse generator feeding the input. It requires about a half volt before it fires off uh, a uh, quick fall time pulse. And then here it is on my scope. I'm measuring, with this scope, 300 or so picosecond uh, downtime. And I've got 20 dB of attenuation on the output, and it's 100 millivolts per division, so it's a very, very strong down pulse. So I think this will work. I have no doubt that it's 50 picoseconds, but um, <clears throat> this scope only has one uh, gigahertz of bandwidth. Maybe, well, obviously a little bit more than one gigahertz of bandwidth uh, capability. So, very cool. It's definitely working now. All right, here it is, uh, complete and all buttoned up. Now we'll try to hook up a uh, differentiator circuit, which would be a faster in series with the output of this thing to generate uh, an impulse. Because right now, what we have is a uh, a pulse, a, just a downward pulse with very sharp uh, fall time. And we need an impulse for this radar system. But the key to a good impulse is a nice sharp, uh, nice sharp rise time or fall time in this case. To make the differentiator, I've taken this. Uh, I believe this is Arlon or one of those microwave substrates. I calculated the width for 50 ohm microstrip line, uh, machined that out, and then placed two SMA connectors on either end. And I'm going to take my Dremel and cut a notch in there and put this, uh, put a 5 picofarad cap there. So that'll be the differentiator. And we'll see if that creates a suitable impulse. Okay, so I ended up using two. Uh, 5 picofarad microwave caps in series, and we're getting uh, impulses over here with rise times of about 350 picoseconds, according to this scope, uh, which only has about 1 gigahertz of bandwidth. So um, I think that's pretty good for what I want to do. And as you can see, there's an up and a down. The down one um, should be about, uh, should be a little quicker than the up, but they seem to measure about the same in this system. Uh, so I think what I'll do is I'll go with the up pulse, and because if you see when I zoom out, oh, let's see, yeah, you know the there's a good amount of time after the up pulse uh, to look at the reflected signals uh, that will be bouncing around the lab when we try hooking this up to the radar. So that'll be the plan going forward. Uh, the next step is. 
will mount the impulse generator uh, into the radar front end and uh, we'll hook up power and see if we can uh, see anything. Alright, so we're going to start with um, this X-band front end and first thing that had to be done was to remove this um, IF amplifier and low pass filter and replace it with this microwave uh, wideband amplifier. So this is the IF amp. We have a wideband microwave cable. Next, um, for the pulse input that goes to this mixer down here, I'm going to replace this RG174 with uh, with a microwave coax, and then and then we'll feed in um, RG174 to this BNC, so so as to preserve the pulse shape as much as possible. Okay, so now I've installed a wider band uh, transmit feed line and the next step will be to hook up the pulse uh, generator to the transmit IF input and see what happens. Okay, so now we have the uh, differentiator installed which is just two five picofarad capacitors in series. We have this microwave feed line going down to the uh, IF port of the transmit mixer. So we'll try this out and see if it goes. Alright, so here you have the impulse radar set up. It's up and running. There's the uh, impulse generator, or rather the, um, I don't know what you call it, steep slope generator, the impulse generator. Here's the X-band front end with the differentiator installed. This pulse generator is driving, is triggering this guy, and then he fires once he sees more than 500 millivolts, and the output goes to here, and then uh, convert it up to X-band. The LO, down here you see the power control uh, rack and everything for the X-band front end. At the very bottom is the LO set to 10 gigahertz. And then over here, so I can zoom in. There we go. Okay, so there's the time domain output. So when I move this around, you can see there's one spike which probably corresponds to the door. I move the radar back. There's the ceiling, that one spike. And it's face coherent because you can see it has both a positive and a negative going amplitude. Here's some more stuff. This is just kind of my lab. I assume a lot of those things in the way back are probably the furnace and so on and so forth. Um, I think what I'll do now is We'll rotate this around. All this cabling. It's kind of tough, but yeah, I think we got it. Okay. Okay. This is going to be great. So what we'll do is. I'm that pip there, that's me behind the camera. I'm gonna walk backwards. So I'm right here. As you see, I'm walking backwards, backwards, backwards. Every you can see each wavelength, you know, every half wave it goes up, down, up, down, up, down. Continuing to walk backwards right about here. Oops, running into some stuff. There I am. Still walking backwards. You know, maybe if I held a big piece of metal or something, it might be a little up more obvious. Let's see if we can get a little more distance from this thing. Alright. Let's grab. Closer, closer, closer. Further, further, further. I think why we see two, it's probably because of the rising and falling edge of that pulse, that pulse generator. That's why we're getting two, two pips. 
It's definitely working. So the next step is to uh, try it out in the field.